Before I begin, let me just say that Bloodborne has my favorite single player out of any From game ever made, and that is saying a lot. Additionally, very few people will disagree Dark Souls 2 probably had the weakest single player out of the series, while still being a comparatively great game to everything else out there. That being said, I think the netcode of Bloodborne should have departed from the Demon Souls and Dark Souls style, which it's clearly based on, and moved on to Dark Souls 2's. I'm not even going to use the fact that matchmaking is completely broken as of April 14th, 2015, due to the fact I'm putting my faith in From to fix the situation, so that point could be rendered obsolete and therefore is not really good for an argument. First, let's look briefly how the netcode in Dark Souls 2 differs from the rest of the series and how it is both better and worse. I actually made a separate video based entirely on how Dark Souls 2 netcodes work, so I'm just going to basically summarize it here. Dark Souls 2 PvP is like a one-way street. Data is sent, checked, and then applied. What you see on your screen in terms of where the enemy is is all that matters. If you poke them with a sword and it hits on your screen, even if they are further away on their screen due to latency and the nature of peer-to-peer -peer movement, they are still going to take damage unless they are currently in invincibility frames from rolling or backstepping. In Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Bloodborne, PvP is like a two-way street. Let's say Player 1 swings and Player 2, who appears to be in range for a hit on Player 1's screen, does not roll or attempt to dodge the attack. The hit connects on Player 1's screen, and then that data is transferred over to Player 2's computer. On Player 2's computer, it checks whether or not he is currently in iframes, and if not, it checks again if he is in range of Player 1 on his own screen. If both conditions are met, with Player 2 being in range of the swing on not only Player 1's screen but his own as well, then damage is applied and you see the stagger and the number pop up. There are upsides and downsides to each style of netcode. For one in every game but Dark Souls 2, the chances of you getting hit further away from the displayed attack animation of your opponent is lower than in Dark Souls 2. Granted, it's still a peer-to-peer -peer game, and chances are you will be hit from far away at some point, but the chance does appear to be smaller than it is in Dark Souls 2. However, the biggest thing about having multiple transfers of data before damage is applied is worse latency. Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Bloodborne simply have more of a delay before damage shows up in PvP. It's not unnoticeable either, it is significantly worse than Dark Souls 2 due to the nature of having more checks before damage is applied. I fought about 20 people in both games and made sure they were from the United States by checking their PS4 profiles, and you know, you can make sure it says English and then United States in parentheses, you know, to reduce any variables of latency. Small differences can occur with varying levels of internet speed, which is why I did more than a handful of tests. The average delay before an enemy is staggered and shows up is, on average, three times greater from Bloodborne to Dark Souls 2, on the same type of connection. Unless I conveniently fought 20 laggy people in a row in Bloodborne, and then 20 people with perfect connections in a row in Dark Souls 2, this footage speaks for itself. On average, between my sample size of 20 people from the United States in Bloodborne, the amount of frames it takes for the swing connecting to damage being registered was between 10 and 15. In Dark Souls 2, the average delay between a swing connecting and damage registering was 3 to 5 frames. For a game as fast-paced as Bloodborne, that is an almost unforgivably large difference in delay. Now, you might argue, well, maybe you just got a lot of laggy people in a row in Bloodborne and all people with really good connections in Dark Souls 2. And I'll indulge the absurdly small chance of that happening by offering a comparison of parry timings from Dark Souls, which uses nearly identical netcode to Bloodborne, to Dark Souls 2. In PvE, Dark Souls had absolutely instant parry frames the second you pressed the parry button. You could do it a single frame before the enemy swing connected, and it would work. In PvP, however, you had to do it way before your opponent attacked, and it became a sort of like prediction minigame that everyone came to know and love. In Dark Souls 2 PvE, when you parry an enemy, you have to time it a little bit differently, as there is a small delay before parry frames become active. If you parry a frame before an enemy hits you in Dark Souls 2, you'll just get hit. Why then, in Dark Souls 2 PvP, can you parry much sooner successfully than you can in Dark Souls 1, if Dark Souls 1 had instant parry frames? It would make sense that because there is a delay in the parry frames in Dark Souls 2 and no delay in Dark Souls 1, you could parry more based on reaction in 1 than 2, but the opposite is true due to the nature of higher latency netcode. Anybody that has played both games for more than a few hours can tell you that this is true. I mean, just look at this difference between Dark Souls 1 parrying and Dark Souls 2 parrying on people with the same basic connections. This is how it always looks in Dark Souls 1. You complete the animation, and then the opponent gets parried. In Dark Souls 2, it's like parrying a PvE enemy. There's no latency. That's a huge, huge difference. So, in my opinion, Bloodborne is less about proper spacing and more about quick-stepping, attacking, and kind of just dancing around the field like a blood-addled psycho. 
Because of the vastly greater frequency of dodges in Bloodborne due to the massively lowered stamina consumption for doing so, characters are in iframes for a much, much larger duration of the fight, and so the one-street method of netcode in Dark Souls 2 loses its one downside, which is improper registration of outer drained attacks, because the method does in fact count iframes as a negator to the damage. Since players are in iframes for a much greater duration, the benefits of instant hit registration begin to outweigh the off chance you'll get hit in the small time you're not in iframes while out of range. I mean, obviously, I would like all of the pros of Dark Souls 2 Neko to be melded with Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Bloodborne's much safer damage checking, but in a chaotic game like Bloodborne where characters are invincible for a much greater time, I believe instant damage registration is vastly more important than accurate spacing checks because spacing is just not as important in this game. This video is intended to argue the netcode differences between the game, not even scratching the other large fundamental flaws Bloodborne has for PvP like the speed of blood vials, which by the way could conveniently be fixed with Dark Souls 2 instant hit netcode by allowing those heals to actually be reliably parried instead of like, you know, very very rarely. The video also didn't touch upon the bell maiden idea, which is neat, but it really really hampers possible places to fight other players. And that seems like a building block design of the game that'll never be changed, but hopefully I'm wrong. It also didn't touch upon the horrendous load times within the already absurdly long rates to find people, but I mean, I hear the load screens are going to be patched soon. That being said, there's only so much you can do to patch load screens, and I don't think the change will be that drastic regardless. And, you know, there are several other things currently plaguing Bloodborne's PvP right now, but this video was mainly about the base netcode of the game, and when it does work properly, I think it would be better, you know, if it was more like Dark Souls 2. But anyway, I'm eager to hear everyone bitch at me for being wrong. So, uh, yeah, definitely tell me what you think, and uh, hopefully I convinced a few people. It's not like it's going to do anything. I just felt the need to rant. Thanks for wasting your time.